there are a grand total of 19 Smithsonian museums. And of all 19 museums, this is likely the best of the bunch. The only museum that comes close is maybe the Air and Space Museum. There is so much to see and do here, it's hard to imagine anyone could come here and not feel that they are seeing some of the world's best artifacts. It is one of the largest museums in the world that caters to both kids and adults. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what this museum has to offer. Let's start off by talking about the location. This museum is very easy to find. It's dead smack in the middle of the National Mall. And it's one of the largest buildings in DC. And when in fact, it's one of the largest museums in the entire world. As you walk through the front door, the first thing you're gonna see is this huge African elephant. And it kind of sets the tone for what's to come because right around the elephants are all these different rooms and they span out to different sections of the museums. But this is an awesome sight right as soon as you enter. Now, as you walk around the main hall of the museum, you'll notice that it's broken up into different sections and you're looking at some of the sections right here. And as you walk into the door, it you know goes way back further into the uh, museum and there's an upper and a lower level. And we're gonna head into one of the sections right now so you can take a look around and see exactly what it's like. But these sections are huge and they cover a lot of material. You can literally spend an entire day here. There's no real you know, time limit on how long you have because it's really the largest museum in the world. So if you're into you know, this natural history, literally you could be here for an entire week. Being at the museum is not limited to what's behind the glass. There's lots of things to feel and to touch and learn. Learning is a big part of helping adults and kids learn about nature and the world they live in. The presentation you're gonna find are gonna be colorful, entertaining, and it's gonna be enticing in a way that gets you to want to learn. There are a variety of ways that the museum presents information to you. In addition to actual artifacts, there are theaters scattered throughout the museums and all these theaters are free. So you can come to a theater, you can sit down and you can learn about the objects that you're actually looking at right outside the theater. So it's a great way to bring, you know, what's um, what imagination and, and, and kind of merge it with reality. This is not just a museum, it's an actual working museum where there's real laboratories, where there are scientists uh, that are paid. In fact, these are the largest collections of scientists in the entire world um, that are working at this museum studying natural history. What the scientists are looking at is actually displayed on the screen so the kids can see what you know they're actually looking at in these microscopes i don't know how much work they actually get done here but it's pretty cool to watch them actually at work despite the stairs you're going to see in the next frame the museum is 100 percent wheelchair accessible you may recall earlier that i said the museum presents information in a variety of ways and one way is human scientists that are actually on hand to talk to kids and adults about the stuff that you're looking at they actually bring real things out for you to touch and feel and to talk about get the conversation going especially with kids so if you want to learn or if you're thinking about having you know having kids come by this is an excellent opportunity for them to learn they find ways to make the information palatable and also very interesting. For the most part, most everything you see here, you don't have to pay for. The entrance to the museum is 100% free. However, on occasion, they'll have exhibits that cost. This time around, they have the butterfly exhibit, which is very popular. It costs about seven bucks to get in. Most of you who are familiar with my channel know that I specialize in fun and interesting things for individuals and families to do in the DC metro area. And I can honestly say that coming to the Natural History Museum is simply one of the best ways that you can spend your time. One of the museum's prized collection is the Hope Diamond. It's the most famous diamond in the world. And no, it was not on the Titanic. And as big as that diamond in, believe it or not, it was actually cut in half. Now let's take a look at what that Hope Diamond looks like now. 
One of the questions you may be asking is, is this museum right for kids? And I can tell you with absolute certainty that kids will love it here. And when I say kids, I mean kids of all ages. Children, teenagers, and adults all universally love this museum. The reason? It is so large, there's something here for everyone. Even if you're not necessarily a history, history lover, you'll find something here that draws your attention and entices your imagination, and in turn, causes you to just really enjoy the experience. recall I said earlier that the museum is broken up into different sections and each person will have a section that's maybe their favorite. For me, my favorite is the ocean section. I uh, Don't ask me why, but I just love the way this is laid out. I love the way things are displayed. I love the information that is displayed. If you have a favorite haul, I would love to know. Please let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you think. I will respond. If you don't think so, try me. Now, one of the themes that the museum tries to get across is that nature is fragile. And what we as humans do has, have, can have and do have a major impact in the world that we live. So it tries to show that in a lot of different ways um, and it tries to build and make that case. But that's not all what the museum is about. It's not just about saving the world, saving the planet or trying to you know, turn you into uh, a con conservationist. It's just trying to help un you understand nature and the world that you live in. So yes, I do think it has somewhat of an agenda, but mm, not really. As far as sections are concerned, another fan favorite is the fossil section. And it has a bunch of displays and this is recently done. If you've been here before in the past, you realize that maybe some of the displays look a bit new and that's because they redid massive sections of the museum. So if you haven't been here in a decade or two, you're gonna see a lot of things that look very new to you. And one of them is gonna be the fossil section right here. You may recall that early I said you can spend an hour to an entire day here, but folks say to me, hey, look, reasonably, if I just if I don't want to rush and I just want to explore the museum leisurely, how long should I give it? And the answer is it's going to take you an entire day. Remember, this is one of the largest museums in the world. So if so, when planning your visit, here's what I recommend. Think about what you want to see the most, what hallway interests you and then go to that hallway first. If it's the fossil exhibit, exhibit where we are right now, then go there first. Um, if you have a time crunch of say two hours, make sure that you break it up. If you wanna spend one hour in a fossil exhibit, exhibit another is in say the ocean, then you, know, you need to break that up to make sure that you get your money's worth. Well, it's free, so you'll definitely get your money's worth, but you wanna make sure that you use your time wisely. The best way to make the most out of your visit to the museum is to plan ahead of time and do the research. Know exactly what it is you want to see. Here are three ways that you can minimize the crowd. Number one, don't visit on the weekend. Saturday and Sundays are out of the question. Also, try to come here in the mornings at 10 a.m. Usually not that many people there. Also, just before the museum closes at 5.30, Again, not too many people here, so those times tend to be relatively safe. There's lots of things you can do in this museum. One of the things I don't recommend is coming here with an appetite. Food here is going to be extremely expensive and it's just gonna be standard food. There's nothing special here. The only thing special is that you can eat your dinner underneath a shark. And similar to everything in Washington, D.C., we never miss out on an opportunity to try to sell you something. But I found that the museum's gift shop is quite unique. You're going to find things there that you're probably not going to be able to find in other gift shops. There is a lot to see and do at the Museum of Natural History. 
I have only covered a small portion of it. And as you can see in some of the clips to come, there's a lot more that you can see and do and explore and experience. One of the drawbacks of the museum, it doesn't really have a huge uh, Egyptian type, you know, sarcophagus, you know, display and things like that. It does have some, but it's just not huge um, as you would expect. But other than that, there's really not many negatives about visiting this museum's.